So, I'm Jim McAndrew, and I'll be uh, talking today with Mamatha Akella. Uh, we're both from the National Park Service. Uh, I'm sure you know what the National Park Service is, but uh, they control over 400 parks in the United States. Uh, some big parks like Yellowstone and uh, Great Smoky, and other smaller ones like uh, Rock Creek. Right. Some like Rock Creek here in um, the district. And we are both on uh, the MP Map team. Uh, the MPF, MP Map team creates web maps for uh, the parks and for services within the parks. Um, we have a, a GitHub account where we do all of our work, so we encourage everybody to go check it out. And uh, we really want to be part of the uh, open source geospatial community. Um, so today we have two projects we want to talk about. Um, I'll be talking about places and Mamatha will be doing um, talk on park tiles. So places. There are um, a lot of big parks in the United States uh, such as like Yellowstone and Great Smoky that have their own GIS departments and they have a lot of really great data. Uh, unfortunately not all the parks have great data. Uh, some of them are very small, do not have the resources. So we need to figure out a way to get those parks on the map as well as these larger parks. And we need to figure out a way to get everybody contributing. Uh, we want to get the park rangers and we also want to get just the general public, uh, technical and non-technical. And um, the way we decided that we're going to do that is through a uh, version of the ID editor. Um, ID is a really great editor and it is really, really easy to customize to do whatever you want. And that's exactly what we did. We took um, the initial ID editor, we got rid of the ability to do lines and polygons just for simplification, and we added the standard NPS types, and we added our own custom tagging as well as sticking with the original, uh, the original OpenStreetMap tag so we could connect things back together. Um, and we created a nice wiki page on all of our mappings. Um, please go out to the wiki if you have any suggestions on this because um, we are always trying to add new things. It's great that we have the OpenStreetMap tags to work from. Um, as we heard about earlier, uh, it's great that you can add whatever you want to OpenStreetMap and we want to continue to use that in our project. Um, so I want to talk about the whole back end for this thing. Um, we created it using the OpenStreetMap infrastructure, just like the USGS project. Um, we wrote ours in Node.js. It still uses the same API. Um, we did that just because there are so many great tools out there for OpenStreetMap. Uh, we can use the ID editor. We can use, probably use Potlatch. I haven't tried it. Uh, we use Jossum. Um, we were able to use like OSM, the PGSQL, and uh, we're actually using a PG snapshot schema as well, so we have all three of the main schemas going. Um, but we really like using Jossum to do imports in the back end, but also ID for most people because you can really break things with Jossum if you don't know what you're doing. Um, we also want to make sure that all of our users are, are comfortable with the OpenStreetMap tagging because we want to make sure that there's a lot of uh, people from the OSM community helping us out, and we want to help out the OpenStreetMap community. All right, um, but why don't we just use OpenStreetMap is probably what you're thinking. Um, I know that you've probably heard a lot about licensing this weekend, and you're probably sick of it, so I'll just say that um, we have to use uh, public domain for all of the government maps. And there are a few other things holding us up. Um, data validation is one of the big ones. We need to make sure that people don't go in and vandalize or add things in the parks or maybe move a park boundary a little bit over so they can build their shed there or something strange. Um, but everything that we put up on uh, the government website, we are somewhat liable for. So we need to make sure, um, make sure that we do that correctly. I don't know if I have the... Uh, the five explanation points that the last group had. But um, as far as what we're doing next, um, we really just want to go in and get our information out into OpenStreetMap. 
We want to make sure that uh, we can do that in a way that everybody in OpenStreetMap likes. I know there's been a lot of problems with merging data. Uh, we've been looking at uh, Map Roulette, and there's a project called OSMLY, or Awesomely, not sure how they call that one. Uh, but they're two great projects for getting crowdsourced pe uh, efforts to go in and fix the data. Uh, we want to use it for crowdsourced conflation, which um, is a pretty cool way of doing it. Uh, we also want to go into our traditional GIS systems and synchronize the OpenStreetMap data with them. We want to encourage the park employees that are doing this great work to continue doing it, but we also want to have that brought into our map. Um, other things we want to do to increase our map, uh, or to increase our project participation, is edit ID. We are eventually going to add lines and polygons. Um, we also want to add the ability to import like a shape file, and people can stand there and digitize their shape files. We also need to look at what parks are doing. Uh, parks have different programs going on. Uh, an example would be putting trash cans on the map. Um, maybe one park wants to do that, and we want to be able to make a custom version just for them, just for that one task, or possibly temporary things where these parks have an event going on, and they just want to show it's going to be there at the time and have an expiration date. Um, but the overall goal is we want to take all of this great traditional GIS that we already have, we want to fill in the gaps with anything else that uh, we can find from cross-source efforts, and we want to put them all together on a uh, single web-based map, and that is called Park Tiles. And Mammoth can talk about that. Um, I just wanted to say we have a uh, web page here. Uh, please check it out. There's a mailing list on there. All right. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, thank you, Jim. So uh, my name is Mammoth Akella. I am the cartographer on the NP map team. Um, today I'm going to give an update about our base map, Park Tiles, which is the National Park Service base map. About two years ago uh, at State of the Map in Portland, I introduced this base map for the first time. And at that time, we were um, figuring out ways to use open source tools, um, open street map data, combined National Park Service data to see what we could come up with. and. Um, that map only went to Zoom 9, which is about 1 to 1 million scale. Um, so obviously you couldn't go into a lot of detail. Um, but as new tools have emerged and as we've gotten our data situation figured out a little bit better, um, we're excited to um, share with you today our new base map that uh, now goes down to Zoom level 19. Um, so Park Tiles is a base map that um, is meant to focus um, solely on the, um, uh, the, pl the, the special places around the country that uh, the National Park Service manages. Um, it's also meant to fit into the rich uh, graphic and cartographic traditions of the National Park Service. Uh, the data that we are still using in this new version of our base map is um, OpenStreetMap combined with the National Park Service data. So uh, we're using OpenStreetMap primarily for base data, so for features like roads, buildings, hydro, um, place names. Uh, we're using our own data for features obviously like uh, national park boundaries, um, plates or national park names, <laughs> and, um, and POIs. So the system that Jim just talked about, uh, the POIs are coming from our places system. Uh, the tools that we're using for this map, uh, to read in our data, we're using OGR to OGR to read in our data, our park service data into PostGIS. Once it's in PostGIS, we're doing a lot of data processing on it um, for things like simplif simplifying our uh, polygons for display through scale. We're also doing a lot of work on um, figuring out intelligently ways to introduce parks through scale. Um, sometimes there'll be points, sometimes there'll be polygons. We need to figure out, we're figuring out good ways to introduce those. We're also doing a lot of uh, work in PostGIS on figuring out really good labeling rules. So we have a um, very a good looking map that's uh, introducing park labels in a meaningful way instead of just dumping everything on there. 
Um, we are using Tile Mill 2, the first version of our base map. We also used uh, Tile Mill, but Tile Mill 1. Um, so, like you guys have probably heard in a couple of presentations today, um, Tile Mill 2 basically uses vector data sources of um, OpenStreetMap data, which is called Mapbox Streets. So, we're, so by default, you get a Tile Mill 2 project with Mapbox Streets already in there. And um, in addition to that, we've made vector sources of our National Park Service data, added that into our Tile Mill 2 project as well. And so we're designing um, everything in conjunction with each other. And I'm breezing through this, so if you have more questions, feel free to ask me. Um, but Tile Mill 2 has been a lifesaver because we weren't able to get to the larger scales that we wanted to get to. So uh, this is really exciting and it's been a long time coming. Uh, for the points of interest on the map, um, we took our traditional print, print icons that we use on our printed maps and, um, and enhanced them for the web. We forked the uh, project from Mapbox Maki and we made it NP Maki, which is um, available on our GitHub if you're interested. We're not done um, with all the icons. We still have quite a few to add, but um, that's where we're starting. So because we've decided on the tools, these tools, and um, OpenStreetMap data and our places system, basically what we've created, what we are creating is a dynamic base map. Um, for those of you who are familiar with uh, Mapbox base maps, you know that when you go into OpenStreetMap and edit the data that those, those changes show up almost instantaneously, in some cases, um, on their base maps. So since we're using the same OpenStreetMap um, vector data sources that they're using, we can um, encourage our parks to go update OpenStreetMap and they will also see those changes in our base map park tiles um, at the same speed. Um, we also, since we're using the places system to uh, edit our POIs and to make those better, we won't have such quick turnaround time on those, but we are planning as um, it picks up to do nightly updates, so those updates will be seen on the base map uh, relatively quick as well. Um, so where is park tiles going to be used? Um, <clears throat> I've realized that like these screenshots got cut off on the top, so I apologize, but um, over the next year or so, you'll see a major refresh of nps.gov. So in addition to the printed park maps that you can access on um, the websites, you will also um, see park tiles on every park page, and it could be overlaid with different themes of data depending on what the park wants to do. Um, we're working on a... <clears throat> Places mobile framework that is basically a framework that parks can use to um, build mobile apps of their parks. And we've been prototyping the workflow with um, a few parks right now, so we're trying to come up with a good way to share it with other parks. And the base map that we'll be using in the mobile application is Park Tiles. Um, we'll continue to use it in the custom projects that our team works on. Um, we've been using the base map that goes to Zoom 9 or 1 to 1 million um, quite a bit, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, uh, Park Tiles will also be the default base map in our NP Map Builder, which is a tool that makes it really easy for um, both technical and non-technical NPS employees to build um, web maps that are um, accessible, responsive, and have the graphic identity of the National Park Service. So basically, um, they can embed these maps in websites or, we, or they can embed them in an NPS-branded um, web application. Okay, so now I'll just kind of go through some uh, screenshots of park tiles. Um, again, this is really meant to focus on our national parks. Um, so we've really minimized the amount of information, of extra information that we're displaying. Um, so kind of you'll notice as we zoom in through scale that um, there's not a lot of extra information on this map. And I forgot to mention also that we are using the um, vector terrain from Mapbox, so we've kind of styled that to fit in with the look that we wanted. Um, and we've also used a really kind of subtle color palette, so when information is overlaid on this map, which is going to be its primary use, that, um, that will really kind of come out to the foreground. 
Um, <clears throat> so you'll notice like at this zoom level we've kind of um, barely put in some roads and um, start adding some city labels here. And you can keep zooming in. Um, we have some issues in labeling, so Zion's labeled twice, but we're working those out. And when you get to the larger scales, you start to see the um, points of interest from the places system that Jim was talking about. Um, we've decided instead of labeling them that we're going to make them interactive um, to keep the map less crowded. Um, so as you, yeah, so that's basically what I want to show with that. Um, we also have a lot of parks in um, cities, so DC, Boston, Philadelphia, um, and it's just a crazy mess of parks. Um, but in the, so we're still working those areas out uh, with labeling and things like that. But um, here's just an example of a city, San Francisco, and um, you know some of the parks we have there: Fort Point, Presidio of San Francisco, San Francisco Maritime, and um, just to kind of demonstrate how we're really keeping the information that you see in the city very, very minimal, because we really want you to focus on the parks. And you can, you know, zoom in. And we've just really kept this to be a very uh, clean design where we're hoping that overlays will look really good on. Um, here's a Crater Lake National Park just to show the vector train looks really good. And uh, here is Mount Rainier. And again, you can zoom into all these parks uh, down to the very detailed level. Um, the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, this is Grand Canyon Village, Virgin Islands National Park, and um, with this Places mobile app that we've been working on, um, we've been traveling to kind of some far off parks that maybe you've never heard of. So here's one in Iowa, uh, Herbert Hoover, and we went into OpenStreetMap and added all the data for those parks. And um, also we be we've started adding them into our Places system. Um, here's Fort Smith, which is um, on the border of Oklahoma and Arkansas. And here's a tiny little town I was in um, in Alaska called Skagway. And um, this is part of the Klondike Gold Rush uh, National Historical Site. Okay, and that's what I have. Um, park tiles will hopefully be released officially in a couple of weeks. Um, so we're really excited about that. Like I said, we just have some um, details to work out. And um, you can follow our blog at nps.gov slash npmap and um, we'll be writing more about this project and the process. So thank you.